Call to order the Grant County Board of Commissioners for October 20th, 2016. Welcome everybody. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance and the salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with the liberty and justice for all. I submit the flag of the state of New Mexico with the state symbol of perfect friendship among the United States. Are there any changes that need to come on the agenda, Madam Manager? Yes, sir. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. The motion is second, so approve the agenda. Is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, say five say aye. 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 Motion passes. Public input. During this portion of our meeting, we welcome your suggestions and want to hear your concerns. This is not a question and answer period. Speakers will be limited to five minutes. Any individual who would like to discuss an item in more depth may request to be placed on future agenda. Request forms are available in the county manager's office. Today I'm going to ask our county clerk to please time everybody so he'll give you a one-minute warning and then he'll give you the cutoff sign. Is there any public input today? You, sir. Please state your name for the record. No, you. Right in the front. Turn on the mic. The white button. White button. The white button. Okay. Uh, my name is Raymond Lloyd. I live on Spring Creek Road. i um, been trying to get a water hole up there to Ethel and Rosedale filled in because of the mosquitoes. It stands full of water all summer. Can't get it done. <clears throat> County should take care of the roads and not the driveways. They should grade the roads with a ditch all the way down. But they're afraid they'll hurt somebody's feelings by <clears throat> making a small crease there in somebody's driveway. Uh, the water runs across the road everywhere on Spring Creek Road because there's no ditches. Uh, the graders can't drag across anybody's driveway. And uh, uh, people don't seem to care for it. They can put in culverts. Uh, <clears throat> a year ago, I uh, uh, talked to uh, Commissioner Ramos and um, the county um, road man, uh, manager, and they said it was going to send out papers to um, everybody on Spring Creek to, uh, if they'd put in culverts, the county would do it if they wanted to, that the county would do them. The letters never got sent out. Um, been trying to get my culvert cleaned out that the county put in. I've been trying to get that done for two years. Can't get it done. The whole road up there by my house floods. And a couple of rains we get here. <laughs> and I um, can't get the ditch cleaned out on the right side of the road. The grader always brings it, <clears throat> the gravel up on the left side of the road, always. And the ditch on the right side in a lot of places is plumb full. They won't clean that out. Um, so that's all I have to say now. Bernadette, would you make sure you get Mr. Lloyd's contact information for him? And, and, and he's been contacted. We've been out there three times now. We've been to his actual personal house and to that pond that he's talking about. But the levels on the road on both sides is kind of settled towards the only thing you can do is pond it or dig underneath but uh, I asked both Mr. Lloyd about a week ago and I really this information to Earl and, and Earl is working on it okay so you guys contact him first thanks Mr. Lloyd thank you thanks sir okay. further public input seeing none we'll move on minutes approve or disapprove yeah, yeah, right there. who oh okay sorry Mr. State Chairman, your name. Yes. Rebecca Dow, the members of the committee, thank you very much for allowing me to speak. It's a beautiful day in Grant County, and I am here to give you my personal cell phone number. It's 575-571-1056, and to encourage the people here in the audience and listening to get out and vote early. Thank you. Thank you. Any other 
Okay, now we're officially moving on. Okay, minutes. Approve or disapprove September 13th, 2016 work session minutes. Motion to approve the September 13th, 2016 work session minutes. Can I second? There's a motion and a second to approve the September 13th, 2016 work session minutes. Is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, sing five, say aye. 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 Motion passes. Approve or disapprove September 15th regular meeting minutes. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make the motion. We approve the September 15th, 2016 minutes. Second. There's a motion and a second to approve the September 15th regular meeting minutes. Is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, sing five, say aye. 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 Motion passes. Financial reports. Linda, would you go through the expenditure report for us, please? Mr. Chairman, members of the board, um, in front of you, you have an expenditure report for approval. The total is $2,720,000, $477.88. Um, this is for the period ending October 17, 2016. And included in this is a uh, total sum for the accounts payable of $2,065,907.36. Included in um, this total is a check to PNM uh, for $22,498.22, and that is for service work at the uh, Courthouse Electrical Project. A check to the New Mexico Human Services Division um, for $92,000. $921.17, and this is for the um, first quarter contribution to the safe, safety net care pool. There is a check to Sacaton Construction in the amount of $43,136.10, and this is for the uh, project payment for the Forgotten Veterans Workshop. A uh, check to Southwest Concrete and Paving uh, for $21,000. $952.38, and this is for um, the Concrete First World Special Projects. A check to um, DFA in the amount of $16,790.83, and this is a uh, reversion of funds for the 2016 DWI grant um, that were left. A check to OCAM in Engineers in the amount of $52,712.14. And this is for um, project payments for the North Hervey Road, the Rosedale Road, and the Tyrone Community Colonias project. There's a check to Stoven Construction in the amount of $22,498.96. And this is the final payment on the Conference Center remodel and a check to the New Mexico State University in the amount of $17,000. And this is for the first quarter uh, payment of the fiscal year 2017 contribution for the extension services. And then also included in here is um, payroll checks totaling um, $654,570.52. And this is for the pay period ending August 27th, um, September 24th, and October 8th. So the total sum, um, for, again, for this expenditure report is $2,720,477.88. Motion to approve the October 17, 2016 expenditure report. And I second. And motion is second to approve October 17th expenditure report. Is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify say aye. 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 Motion passes. Moving to new business. Approve or disapprove a proclamation declaring October 24th through the 28th, 2016, as pro bono week. Bernadette, would you please read the proclamation? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Whereas the Mexico ranked 50th in poverty, with one in five of the states, two million. 45,535 people living far below the poverty line. People living in poverty experience a greater degree of legal problems, the majority of which are civil matters, divorce, child support, custody, domestic violence, grandparents' rights, kinship, guardianship, and issues arising from CYFD actions, consumer matters, creditor, utility, and bankruptcy issues, mental health and substance abuse issues, and problems in gaining access to services, Medicaid, government insurance, and treatment facilities, employment issues, the loss of a job, 
subsequent unemployment benefits, and pension matters, and housing issues, foreclosure, eviction, poor living conditions, and unsatisfactory repairs. And whereas each year the low-income persons and elders in Grant County lack access to legal assistance for their legal problems that are often critical to their safety and independence, forcing them to resolve complex legal problems on their own, and whereas the need for legal aid and pro bono services in New Mexico is dire, funding for low-income New, New Mexicans who need civil legal assistance has not yet been met with the consequences being a lack of access to justice, which is devastating for the poor and which it weakens our democratic society as a whole. And whereas although 72% of the members of the legal community in the 6th Judicial District donate their time and talents in the form of free legal services each year, a huge unmet need for legal assistance remains for the disadvantaged in our area. And we're as sponsored by the Access to Justice Commission and the American Bar Association with support from local pro bono committees statewide, Pro Bono Week 2016, October 24th through the 28th, 2016, will educate the public about the extensive work New Mexico lawyers are doing when they donate their time to improve the lives of vulnerable community members and will encourage more individuals in the legal community to get involved in pro bono a week and to help financially support the legal aid system. And whereas Pro Bono Week 2016 will feature legal clinics throughout the state assisting the New Mexicans who greatly need this assistance but, not, but cannot afford to pay for that help. And will also feature recognition events throughout the state of New Mexico honoring lawyers and judges for making a difference in New Mexico. Now, therefore, the Grant County Board of Commissioners do hereby proclaim October 24th through the 28th, 2016, be declared as Pro Bono Week, and urge all residents to recognize the contributions of our legal community, helping those most in need. In witness whereof, we here we have hereon to set our hands and seal of the Grant County of Grant to be affixed in Silver City, Grant County, New Mexico, this 20th day of October 2016. Thank you, Bernadette. Thank you. Is there anybody here? Okay. State your name for the record, please. Tim Aldridge, Your, your Honor. Uh, I'm part of the commissioner of... Can you guys hear this, or did I actually turn it off? Uh, well, well when, you, when, you're the, when you're the head of the, the commission, you're actually... It's appropriate to call you your honor. So, and Judge Hall is here too. Do I? By the way, Judge Hall, I want to thank you for all of your work, uh, working to get the, our rehab going, to get that detox going. I've been here now for four years. It's the most important need we have in this community. The addiction that we've got going on, and everything that we're dealing with in this is addiction based. And so we really need that, and I appreciate that. But anyway, as far as the attorneys, we are going to. To be over at uh, in the University of uh, Western New Mexico on Thursday. We'll be there starting at 10. We're going to do an educational portion in the morning and then free legal services in the afternoon. And then we got a free lunch going on as well for the community. So we want everybody to, to get out lots of education, uh, do some one on one work, and try to help support the community. If anybody's got questions, please encourage friends and people that you come in contact with during the day. And thank you so much for this proclamation and what you guys do in regards to this county and the state of New Mexico. I really appreciate it. Okay, the time. In fact, maybe what I'll do is I'll, I'll leave. Uh, you guys can hand out some of the Grant County form stuff. But the, the time is at 10, 10 a.m., and it's at the Global Resource Center at the University of New Mexico, Western New Mexico. So I think everybody knows where that is, it's where all the debates are held, and where everybody goes to get that exciting information that we have in our community. And it's 10 to basically 4, or whenever we get done with people. We generally hang around until everybody's been taken care of. So if there's any, not any more questions, I don't think we have any more questions, but we're going to vote on this, and then if you come up with us, we'll get a picture for the newspaper. Oh, excellent. Okay. All right. So uh, can I get a motion on Pro Bono Week? 
uh, make a motion to approve the proclamation declaring October the 24th uh, through the 28th, 2016, uh, pro bono week. I second. There's a motion and a second to approve the proclamation declaring October 24th through the 28th as pro bono week. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. <coughs> is it only you? It's only, it's only you. All right. Everyone else is working. <laughs> I'm working Approve or disapprove proclamation declaring October 2016 as Dyslexia Awareness Month. Bernadette, can you read the Dyslexia Awareness Month? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Whereas an estimated one-fifth of Americans are affected by dyslexia, the language-based disorder which is characterized by difficulties with speaking, reading, and written expression. And whereas dyslexia can affect a person's ability to speak, read, write, and spell, as well as a person's ability to put things in order and follow instructions. And whereas with proper diagnosis, appropriate instruction, hard work, and support from their families, teachers, and friends, individuals with dyslexia can excel in school and later as working adults. And whereas in an effort to assist parents, educators, and individuals with dyslexia, the International Dyslexia Association, the Southwest Branch of the International Dyslexia Association, and the Learning Center for Dyslexia and Academic Success in Grant County are designating October as Dyslexia Awareness Month. Now, therefore, the Grant County Board of Commissioners do hereby proclaim the month of October 2016 be declared as Dyslexia Awareness Month. In witness whereof, we have hereon to set our hands and seal of the County of Grant to be affixed in Silver City, Grant County, New Mexico, this 20th day of October 2016. Thank you, Bernadette. Thank you. And um, is there somebody here with this dyslexia? Oh, come on up. Good representative. Mr. Baca. Mr. Baca. Fred Baca, citizen of Grand County. Mr. Chairman, Grand County Commissioners, elected officials, staff, guests. I really wasn't prepared to speak on this, but um, our founder, Tammy Ogilvie, was unable to attend. Our president, uh, Fiona Bailey, was unable to attend also because of other commitments. But we are truly honored to have uh, this proclamation on this day. I serve as secretary for the Learning Center for Academic Success, and largely our focus is on dyslexia. As the, in the information given, a large population, part of our population, uh, suffers from this uh, language-based disorder in our schools, uh, usually 15 to 25 percent in every classroom um, have difficulty in spelling. It can, it's, it's a language-based uh, disorder, reading, and as a teacher of 37 uh, years, I saw this in my classrooms, uh, students struggling and many times not able to get the help. So the organization was founded by Tammy Ogilvie and in uh, order to help some of the students, uh, there's tutoring available uh, with scholarships uh, for those needing uh, assistance. We have expertise, specialized uh, instructors who have taken training in Las Cruces. Uh, and we're very well prepared to uh, pass on the uh, specialized instruction. Our president again is Fiona Bailey. Martin Miller is our vice president. 
Uh, treasurer is Gail Carter. I serve as secretary. Other members are Jordan Summer, Jay Weissong. Uh, a, a, a lot of appreciation to George Lundy, who did much to establish uh, the organization, which is a nonprofit. Last night we held a workshop at Western New Mexico University to help create an awareness of this particular disorder that affects many people, as famous as Richard Branson, uh, Nelson Rockefeller, many uh, famous people that have been very, very successful. Uh, these students can find success and become great citizens in our country, our counties, and communities with specialized assistance. Uh, I'm sure that the schools, and we have many fine teachers that try to help the students, but sometimes the funding isn't there, and uh, so they need outside help, and that's what we're here for, to be a positive con contributor to the county, not only the community of Silver City, but any uh, a student uh, in the Grand County area. And again, it's quite a, uh, an honor to be honored by uh, the, uh, today. I speak not as president of the Senior Olympics of Grand County or a member of the LULAC organization of Grand County, but here to represent the Learning Center for Academic Success. And I thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So can I get a motion to approve? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make the motion. We approve proclamation declaring October 2016 as Dyslexia Awareness Month. Second. Motion is second for claiming October 2016 as Dyslexia Awareness Month. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify with saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Mr. Baca, come on up here. Next item on the agenda is to approve or disapprove an appointment of Grant County to be the fiscal agent for Costas Adobe's Mutual Domestic Water Association for the 2017 Colonius Infrastructure Fund. I thought that's who was going to be talking. <laughs> Surprise. Yeah. Good morning. Um, is your uh, mic on? Oh. Good morning. Um, it's great to see you. I haven't seen some of you in a while, so it's great to be back. With me, I have the chair of the Casa Salovitz Mutual Domestic Water Consumers Association, and her name is Beverly Melo. So I want to welcome her. But I'd also like to take a moment just to acknowledge some of the board members and residents of the area that are present here um, at the commission meeting as well. So if you could all stand. Okay. Thank you. Please, ha please be seated. Thank you. So um, I'm going to, uh, in your packet, I believe you'll have a letter that I've drafted on behalf of the Casas Alobis Mutual Domestic. And I'm going to give you a little bit of history to kind of tell you where we are today. Um, you all know that Casas Alobis is, uh, was actually a private water system. Uh, about five years ago, we attempted to do the Mutual Domestic and formulate that whole process to be able to transfer the public uh, water system or the private water system to a public um, water system. And what happened then is that we had a different uh, set of board of directors, and what happened is it never really moved. And so, therefore, the actual uh, mutual domestic was, was um, dissolved. That was five years ago. So now we have a new group of people who really have been able to see that there's great need to be able to do the improvements to this water system. So one of the things that's happened is they started back um, last year and started to formulate the, the mutual domestic once again, taking some of those articles of incorporation that were used before and bringing that back to fruition because we know that there's a great need. Therefore, um, um, since then, there's been many challenges as always when you're 
they're trying to uh, transition these types of uh, systems um, to public systems. And therefore now we had a request from the um, uh, Public Regulation Commissioner to allow to them to designate a actual mediator to be able to do the transfer and uh, negotiate the terms of the transfer of the private system to the actual mutual domestic. Um, therefore, they have been a, for, um, a formally, they were actually formed back in last year and so have been working towards this for over a year now. Um, so it's it's a lot of hard work. As you know, when you're newly formed, there's there's many challenges, and they've actually at a point now as as a result of the mediation, where they are actually going to enter into an agreement for the transfer of the actual system itself, um, and also with how they're going to operate with with the water rights and those requirements as needed to be able to be a fully functional mutual domestic. Um, we would expect that to be complete by November. And I maybe Bev, you can explain a little bit about when that's going to happen. But um, one of the things that we're preparing for, and we've been working at this for a while now, is getting them to meet all the requirements um, when you become a public entity. So we've actually developed our capital improvement planning process, knowing that that was forthcoming. And then we've begun to prepare them to be able to begin to increase membership fees, uh, developing those so that they can start to have some working some working operational dollars for that. They've also have secured a, a, gentle, a gentleman that will be their water operator. So um, we're at a point now where we're ready to seek some of the funding because the reality has been is that there has not been a whole lot of improvements to the system in over 30 years. And so there's some real concerns. There's been a sanitary project, um, well, a sanitary project survey that was done in order to determine what those needs are. And so there are some critical needs. So a couple of things are happening. First is that we want to be able to present this year at the legislative forum uh, for Grant County to potentially seek funding from the capital outlay, but also to prepare for applying for funds under the Colonial Infrastructure Fund. Um, one of the things that I want to bring forth with regards to the Colonial Infrastructure Fund is that they are going to allow the mutual domestic to apply in their name. Although, once they get to the screening processes and if they find that there's a need to have a fiscal agent for that Colonial Fund, should they be awarded, then absolutely we're going to need the county to potentially step in and serve as that fiscal agent. And the reason is, is because they really haven't had a chance to, number one, really formulate everything that's required by the state in order to meet the governor's executive order, which is everything from budget to quarterlies to meeting all the requirements of the how you, of a public uh, water utility and, and then some, and you know there's many more items to that. The one thing we absolutely want to do is, is take the opportunity to apply for capital outlay dollars should the money be available for the purposes of meeting some of the immediate needs. So whatever that may be at this point based on that survey is what we would tackle with the uh, capital outlay and then what we would tackle would be to do the remaining improvements um, with the Colonial Infrastructure Fund. It is also our intent to be able to seek funding for a preliminary engineering report to do a total, uh, to do a uh, complete uh, entire, entire evaluation of the system itself. So without um, the assistance of the county in this case, um, it would be very difficult for us to be able to move forward to be able to bring these improvements to the system itself. So therefore, what we're requesting today is at least for the first year of seeking funding until the mutual domestic is, is actually up to where it needs to be with the requirements of the governor's executive order if the county would be willing uh, to serve as fiscal agent um, uh, for the entire year. So um, is there anything you'd like to add, Beth, to that? I would just like to say that um, we have instituted a $500 startup fee for each tap. And um, we have 130 tap users. At this point, we have over 100 people who have paid their fees. So we, um, some of them are in, in payments, but 
a fair amount of them have paid up front. So at this point in time, we have about $25,000 in our account. Uh, we have a startup plan with where we're going to put these funds, what they're going to go to, so that we have something to start with. I would also like to add, Mr. Chair and Commissioners, that we all know the requirements of some of these funding sources, and specifically the Colonial Infrastructure Fund. And I've done a little bit of research just explaining to them at the state level what are some of the unique issues or the challenges with this project. And we all know that currently they're not going to have the 10% match, right? And they're not... Uh, and they may not have the ability to take on the loan either. So should you have to be the fiscal agent, and there, it is our intent, whether it's you or the, um, the uh, mutual domestic, we are going to ask for waivers on both those requirements, which is the actual um, the loan itself and the matching requirements. Now, should we get a capital alley, then at that point we could, mo you know, we could uh, modify the application to show that. But at this point, I think they... They fully understand that this is a newly formulated public entity that's not going to have those resources at the time of application. So that is our intent. We don't expect you at this point to be able to, to provide that match. It is our intent to be able to start putting dollars away to see what it is that we can provide. But you have my guarantee as a member of the Colonial Board that I will do everything possible to really to help them to understand that at this point there's nothing they can do. I mean, it's not that they haven't tried. They've, they've done a wonderful job of taking my advice and getting them to where they are today to be able to, to solicit the funding to make the improvements. We know that um, there's many homes that have been impacted out there, not only homes, but the sale of properties. And so um, it's important that we really look at providing that potable water for these residents of these communities. So can I answer any questions for you? I was going to ask uh, the manager to kind of go through what this entails for the county costs and what we would actually be doing. We wouldn't um, entail any costs. We would just be a flow-through agency for their funding. So we would accept funding on their behalf. We would administer that. Um, they're um, bringing the revenue in, um, making uh, payments. Um, but there would be no cost to the county other than what we would consider maybe in kind as far as staff time. Um, we typically have been charging um, an administrative fee on, on some of these to um, offset some of our staff costs. But we could take a look at that and maybe waive it in this instance. But as far as the... Um, the mutual domestic would have to follow all the county's purchasing Correct. requirements and the county requirements and PO requirements. Yes, if they're aware of that. Then they have to follow all of our procurement uh, processes and state statute as far as procurement. Okay. Is there any, any questions for Priscilla or Ms. Mala? Okay. Thank you, Priscilla, again, for yeah. taking on another project. You always come through, and we appreciate it. You're, yeah, uh, work your magic. You'll get it done. You. I know it. Thank, Thank you. you for your continued support, and, and, and please, if, if should the uh, New Mexico Finance Authority require a fiscal, that may mean I may be placed in that grant agreement to assist you in the administration of it. But, I mean, it's all about following process, and that's exactly what I want to do as part of this. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and make this motion since this is my district. So I move to approve the appointment of Grant County to the fiscal agent for Casas Adobe's Mutual Domestic Water Association for the 2017 Colonius Infrastructure Fund that year and that the normal fee be waived by the county for this year. My second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, always thank you for your continued support. This is one of those things that's important. Water, those kind of things. Very important. Yeah. I appreciate those things always kept up trying to contribute and then getting you as a spokesperson doesn't hurt ever. I know. <laughs> Okay, next item on the agenda is to approve or disapprove the appointment of five new members for the Grant County Community Health Council. The members that have approved are Connie Glenn, 
Joe Kellerman, Father Jarek Nowacki, I'm not going to try to say that other name, <laughs> Dan Otero, and Stuart Brooks. You got to meet that time. He is interesting to talk to. Hi. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. My name is Carrie Lennon. I'm the co coordinator for the Grant County Health Council. And I come here today to um, seek your final approval for these five individuals who've agreed to join our, our efforts um, as we move forward as the Health Council. And also wanting to just give you a little bit of update on this past year. Um, I'm fairly new to the position. It's been a, close to a year that I've um, held this role. And um, there's been some kind of exciting movement forward. The um, Use Substance Abuse Prevention Coalition has purchased um, uh, prescription drop-off boxes, one in Silver City at the Office of Sustainability, and one at the police uh, police department in Bayard. And so this allows community members to drop off their old medications, um, to keep them out of the hands of those that um, don't need access to them. So this has been a great contribution to our um, community. And last week, they um, YSAP purchased scales to go with these drop-off boxes so that um, officers can actually weigh how much product is coming in. So um, Mike McGee is here, the coordinator for YSAP, and I just kind of want to um, share that update with you. And also on behalf of the Community Partnerships for Children, um, which is a group that collaborates with seven of the early child care centers here in the county. Um, they were recently awarded a $30,000 grant from Thornburg um, in their effort for um, they're calling it the Relief Squad, which is a substitute pool. So they, a lot of times there's a shorthandedness in substitutes um, that are qualified and have had the background checks and all of the necessary qualifications to substitute for the early child care program. So this is a great step forward in their efforts um, to provide quality early child care um, education to our communities. And I have some little pamphlets that I can share with you here in a minute. Um, so yeah, so our five new members, um, they all express a lot of energy and enthusiasm in joining um, our, our efforts and moving forward and transforming and um, making good, great contributions and collaborations and partnerships in the wellness of our residents in Grand County. Thank you very much. Motion to approve the appointment of five new members of the Grant County Community Health Council as stated by the chair. Second. The motion is second to approve Connie Glenn, Joe Kellerman, Father Jarek Narafki, Dan Otero, and Stuart Rooks to the Grant County Community Health Council. Is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, saying five, saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you very much, Carrie. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Hall. I thought you were going to break out in song. I was waiting. No, no, no. no, 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 no. <laughs> I've heard Greg sing that. Um, no, I wouldn't sing. I wouldn't put you through that abuse. Okay, approve or disapprove Corey Camino's final budget for the fiscal year 2017. Um, I guess you. You. Um, this would be to approve the uh, um, final budget for um, fiscal year 17, rather than a federal fiscal year, rather than a nine fiscal year. There have been um, some adjustments to better capitalize on um, the decreasing our amount of match and getting um, better use on the federal match. So those um, those adjustments have been made in here. Randy and Kim and I have met on this several times over the last few months and we feel that this is a solid budget that will allow us to do a few more things, um, possibly expand um, some services back that we have, we have come. So we've um, um, discovered some more additional in-kind that we can use that will leverage those dollars a little better. So we're comfortable with it. Um, this is a, a good solid budget that's in front of you for your approval. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the Code of Camino's final budget for fiscal year 2017. I'll second that. So motion is second to approve Code of Camino's final budget for 2017. Is there any discussion on that motion? 
Seeing none, all those in favor, sing five, say aye. Aye. Motion passes. Approve or disapprove inventory deletion for the Southwest New Mexico Drug Task Force. Can we go through that, Charlie? Yes, Mr. Chairman. This is a list of obsolete equipment that was acquired through the Hyda um, program. We uh, have uh, go through this in the process as we would um, to county purchase the equipment and so we get um, inventory so that we can dispose of the assets. The list is in your uh, There's some um, computer equipment and two um, four pickups. Where is that going? I think you are moving the trucks to maintenance, if I understand. Mm-hmm. And then we will just dispose of the computer equipment because it's, as you can see, it's awesome. 12 years old and it's no good. Okay, thank you. Motion to approve the inventory deletion for the Southwest New Mexico Drug Task Force. I second. Motion second to approve the inventory deletion for Southwestern New Mexico Drug Task Force. Is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. And now we have a presentation from Ms. Claudia Gernick. Did I get that right? It's a very difficult name. Well, you know, it's important to me to get your name right, though. It's uh, it's Durink. Durink. Yes, okay. My name's Regarding Claudia. the five mill levy on the watershed district out in the Gila, and I have to tell you, um, normally I would be up on this kind of stuff, but how I found out about this was in the it was in the paper. Yeah. So that's the only information I have on this. Okay. So please well, go ahead I, and give us your presentation. Okay, so I have a copy of the presentation, if I may. Please. Thank you. Thank you. So good morning again. Thank you for allowing me to make this presentation to you this morning. Um, the Upper Eula Watershed uh, District is um, something that's been around for quite some time, and most people who live in this watershed district and pay a pretty hefty tax in this water district don't even know what they're paying for. And myself included, when I first looked into this issue over a year ago, um, it was very difficult to find out any information. And when I did make requests for information, I was given just, you know, very brief overview of what it was. And it gave me a little more understanding about just what the project is all about. So because it's complex and I've written an outline of uh, discoveries that I've made about this district, and so I just want to read to you my presentation, and I hope that there will be questions after I'm finished. The Upahuila Watershed District was formed on November 23, 1959, and encompassed 3,938 acres between the Gila River and the East and West Irrigation Districts. The district project of 12 flood control dams was completed in 1963. The watershed district board, subject to the approval of their supervisors, the Grant County Soil or the Grant Soil and Water Conservation District, were and are granted statutory authority to levy a maximum five mil tax on the real property within the district to meet their budgetary needs. Meeting minutes during the late 1970s and early 1980s addressed increasingly expensive issues that began to occur with the structures maintained by the district, and discussions began to revolve around finding money for needed repairs. On February 2, 1984, the Hilo Watershed District meeting minutes reflect that there was a big discussion about who to assess taxes even though a levy had been in place from the inception of the district. One member of the board advised other members that the law only allowed a five mil levy on property within the district and that in the prior year they had assessed a 10 mil levy which was over the allowable legal limit. A decision was made to consult their supervisors about how to handle this issue. A special meeting of the district was convened on August 27, 1984, 
at the home of the Secretary Treasurer of the Board of Directors. The stated purpose of the meeting was to discuss Chapter 73, Article 20 of the NMSA. This is a statute that governs watershed districts. During this meeting, the meeting members discussed at great length and met with unanimous decision of the Board of Supervisors, who is the Grant Soil and Water Conservation District, to write a letter to the Grant County Assessor. This letter quotes the statute sections which address their authority, budgets, and assessment lists. It also indicates that they would not levy a tax in 1984. A copy of the letter was sent to the Soil Conservation Service, the county commissioners, and the county treasurer, along with a copy of NMSA Chapter 73, a newly drawn map, and a handwritten list of landowners to be added for taxation. Subsequent meetings of the Board of the Gila Water Shed District were held on October 17, 1984, February 11, 1985, and October 17, 1985, in which there is discussion of the new budget, the new valuation, the five mil taxable amount based on $929,956 of assessable valuation for the district, the new taxable watershed valuation, and tort liability insurance coverage for board members. At no time during any of these meetings was any discussion held on receiving a petition conducting a public hearing or a referendum. At no time between February 1984 and October 1985 did any meeting minutes make reference to NMSA Section 73-20-21, Addition of Land, the primary statute that must be adhered to when increasing the boundaries of a watershed district. For 32 years, county residents illegally annexed into the watershed district have been subjected to the payment of between 19 and 25 percent more residential property tax than other residents in the county. The Grant County Commission, the Grant County Assessor's Office, and the Grant County Treasurer's Office in 1984 failed to provide oversight to uphold the law and protect the constitutional rights of the citizens of the Cliff Gila Valley. The residents of the illegal boundary expansion of the Watershed District have been the victims of the illegal collection and misappropriation of taxes potentially amounting to millions of dollars. NMSA 73-2022 detaching land is the only recourse that a resident has to challenge the district. Any resident who has taken this challenge to the district have been marginalized in the hearing process and have been given the standard denial of their petitions, which is, we protect the roads that allow you ingress and egress from your property. The above claim by the Watershed District Board and their supervisors, Grant Soil and Water Conservation District, implies that residents within the legally expanded district are actually being taxed by the Watershed District for additional state road and county maintenance taxes, even though none of those funds have ever been repaid or reimbursed to the state or to the county for road maintenance that is done below the dams. Not only has taxpayer money been collected illegally, but it has been spent illegally. Hundreds of thousands of dollars have been paid to one person who, has a, who was a board member at one time who voted to pay himself maintenance contract, and it was approved unanimously by the remainder of the board. This is a violation of the New Mexico Governmental Conduct Act and could potentially be considered a class four felony. So I know that Grant County Commission has no input into what happens with this district. You, they're, they're put on the budget as a line item for watershed district five mil tax. So what I am looking for is some kind of a comment or something that reiterates the responsibility of the Grant County Commission 
that they set that a tax rate for all taxing entities in our county is set by and adopted by the Board of Grant County Commissioners. So I kind of think that you know the county commission may have some responsibility to the residents in this district. Thank you very much. Questions, Commissioners? Yes. Yeah. Uh, very interesting, your presentation. What, I, I don't know if our manager has any insight in this or she has looked into it or anything, but I think it's very, very important that, in fact, uh, that, that I would direct our, our county manager to look into it and just see where we do stand and, and what is happening here. There's some, uh, there's some very alarming uh, things that you have talked about here uh, to an individual who may have committed some kind of uh, felony uh, to maybe some exercise by governmental entities that haven't done their job. So I think it's very important for us to look at it, to study it, and then for us to get back to you to maybe figure out where we're at. I would be more than happy to help with any information that you need or any research that I have already done. This has been, you know, three months of very intensive research on my part, and I have a pretty good handle on exactly good. what happened in 1984. So. And I appreciate your interest in your presentation. Okay. How much was it expanded from the original 3,938 acres? Okay, Rolu has the direct exact dimensions. Mr. Chairman, board members, and uh, I've been dealing with this Washington district for many years, and the interesting thing about it is I actually lived it since 1981 when we first uh, looked at the Sequias in 1984 and in 1986. Uh, I went out and drove, drove the uh, Sequias with, uh, with my assessor by the name of Carolyn Torres, and uh, matter of fact, I was only 26 years old, and it was quite interesting. I didn't know what was going on. But uh, the total value for the area now is $22,000,000. Uh, fifteen thousand six hundred ninety-two dollars total value on your net taxable value is six million seven hundred twenty-five thousand five hundred sixty-three. When we're looking at about twenty-six thousand three hundred and forty-six uh, acres and four hundred and twenty-one accounts, twenty-six thousand three hundred and forty-six acres, and we're looking at four hundred and twenty-one accounts. That's including real property, personal property, manufactured homes. They pay into this pot. Okay, thank you. And we can, we, you've gone back and you can see that in 84, that's when that jumped from 3,938 acres to 26,000? Matter of fact, uh, can I show you a map real quick to be sure. okay? <laughs> Everything that's in yellow, matter of fact, this was a handwritten uh, document where uh, where they set the boundaries, and we just set it up on our GIS. And I thank my GIS person, my name of Chris Preston, to, uh, to uh, pencil it in there, literally. And those maps are broken down by account numbers and also uh, broken down by ownership. I guess while you're reading that, uh, I can't believe that all the information that has been saved since 1981 was fully intact from all the budgets and uh, all the letters, not only to the assessor, but the Department of Finance and Administration, and also to the county treasurer. And I've also discussed this information with our treasurer. Well, I think I, too... Uh, can see that there's a major issue here and uh... you know, I would like to just say that I fully understand exactly why they did what they did okay because the original boundaries of the district were all pasture land 
alfalfa land, whatever else they were doing out there at that time. And the taxation value on that land, even today, is pennies, okay? So if they were going to levy a five mil on that bottom land in the Gila Valley, there was no way they were ever going to have enough money from that tax base to support what they needed to do. And especially as, you know, there's meeting minutes that say that there were uh, some of those dam sites at 1984 and earlier that had already reached their 50-year limit. And they were talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars for rehab work on those dam sites. But what I did discover in this entire thing, and, and believe me, this was not something that I pleasantly, I've lived out there for 10 years, I've paid the tax, and I never questioned it really. I mean, once I found out that it was a tax that everybody was paying and the reason for it, I just kind of let it go and went on. But uh, a few months ago, someone who is one of my neighbors asked me a question. And I went to find out the answer to that question. And it was distressing to me to find out that, you know, they just went ahead and did this. And why they didn't do it in a legal format was kind of beyond me, other than that maybe they didn't think that it would pass a referendum. So... Okay. Well, obviously, we can't give you a I know. remedy today I know. or even very good answers since we've just found out about this. I know. But I know that we will we will take it into consideration and we will get back to you. Right. And like right. I say, I offer any assistance that I may be able to give you in okay. helping with this. Very interesting. And thank, thank you very you. much. Okay. Good research. Good presentation. Thank you. Good presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Approve or disapprove the appointment of um, Michael Lars to the planning director as the county certifying official for the purpose of the community development block grants. Mr. Chairman, this was uh, another requirement for the CDG uh, economic development grant um, that we have a formal appointment of uh, Misha to uh, be the county certifying official for the environmental um, Processes that have to be completed. It's just a formality. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the appointment of Michael Reese, planning director, as the county certifying official for the purpose of community development block grant. Second. Motion second to appoint Michael Larsh as the planning as the certifying official for the purpose of community block grants. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, so you say aye. 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 Motion passes. Approve or disapprove. Witness certification for Charlene Webb, County Manager, to certify the signatures appearing on the depository authorized signatories form. Mr. Chairman, this is another requirement of the CDBG Economic Development Grant. And what this is, is I have to certify the signatures. There are two signatures required for every um, request for payments. And, um, to allow that check to be cut. So um, they both, both of those individuals would have to sign that, which would be Misha and Linda, and then I have to witness that they're authorized to make those payments. So lots of requirements for CDBG. Yeah. With this uh, motion to approve witness certification for Charlene Webb, county manager, to certify the signatures appearing on the depository authorized signatories uh, form. Second. Motion is second to approve the witness certification for Charlene Webb, County Manager, to certify the signatures appearing on the depository authorized signatory form. Any discussion? None. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion passes. Moving into contracts and agreements. First agreement is the renewal of the contract for the County Manager. This is a simple renewal with no changes. Leading by example. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make the motion that we approve the contract renewal 
for our county manager. I second that. The motion is second to approve the contract renewal for the county manager. That's a one-year renewal, right? So it adds a year to it? Okay. Uh, any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Approve or disapprove the contract renewal for the county attorney. Same thing, one-year renewal. No changes. Motion to approve the contract renewal for our county attorney. Second. There's a motion and second to approve the contract renewal for the county attorney. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Approve or disapprove an agreement. A1645, a sub grant agreement with the Department of Homeland Security and 2016 Emergency Management Federal Grant EMT 2016 EP 00005 SO1. Mr. Manager? Mr. Chairman, this is the um, funding that pays for half of Gilbert Hilton's salary and, and his role as the emergency manager. This is something we get every year. Um, the federal award is uh, $21,517. Our portion is um, equal to that for each total grant award of $43,034.50. And this is an annual thing, and we, we welcome the receipt of this to offset his salary. This is our next next motion. We approve the agreement number A1645. Second. There's a motion and a second to approve A1645. Is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Item P. I don't have an item P. Yeah. Request to table this item to the November meeting. Um, we were in hopes that DFA would have this grant agreement to us, and we were notified yesterday that they were not going to be able to, to have it to us by today, so we need to table that. So. I move to table A1646 until the November meeting. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. <laughs> Item Q. Approve or disapprove agreement number A1647, male inmate housing agreement with Luna County. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, this is a global um, contract and it is only to house male offenders and it will only be for the 96 hours old, for $200 a day. Um, but what this, what this does is it helps our sheriff's department out. A lot of times, as you can imagine, they held on short term holds, which is for 96 hours, and it um, alleviates us having to make the transports to McKinley County, which is our only other long term housing option most of the time. Um, we do have um, a contract in place with Diana County, also for short term holds, but this will, um, this will alleviate the burden on the sheriff's office tremendously. So I recommend your approval. Okay. Sheriff, do you have anything to say about it? Okay. Can I get a motion? Motion to approve agreement number A1647. Second. And motion and second to approve A1647. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Page three. <sighs> Item R. Approve or disapprove Resolution R1650, Fiscal Year 2016-2017 Budget Adjustments. Uh, Linda, are you going to go over that? Um, thank you. Um, you have Resolution um, R1650 for Budget Adjustments. Okay. Okay, you have a resolution R1650, which um, has several budget adjustments, and we will begin with the general fund. Um, there's a cash transfer into the general fund from the capital projects fund, and this is to cover expenses for a new mortar um, to be replaced on the unit at the sheriff's office. And we also increased expenses for that um, for the fleet maintenance department um, by, the, by the same amount. And there's also an adjustment of a revenue increase of $27,368.64 and also um, increased expenses by the same amount. And this is for the road department. Um, it's for a reimbursement for the, for the uh, chip silk project for Santa Clara. Um, it was to cover the labor and equipment. And then we um, also have a 
an increase in expenditures of $100,000 in the Grant County Fire um, Administration budget, and um, Randy is going to purchase some radio equipment for several of the volunteer fire departments. And there's also a line item adjustment. Um, it's an intra line item adjustment, so it's within their own department for Whiskey Creek. Um, the total increase, um, it totaled to be $3,596. And what they did is they just um, decreased some of their line items and moved it to other um, line items within that department. And then there's also an increase of $423,500 in uh, revenue and expenses for the Cuare Caminos admin grant for 2017, um, $679,550 um, in increase in revenue and expenses for the operating grant for the 2017 Cuare Caminos. And there's an increase of $160,040 in revenue and expenses for the 2017 congregate meals uh, for the senior services. An increase of revenue and expenses of $227,321, and this is for the home delivery grant uh, for 2017 fiscal year at the Senior Services. And uh, there's also an increase in expenses and revenue of $80,600 for the uh, transportation grant at the Senior Services for fiscal year 2017. An increase of $43,530 in expenses and revenue for the 2017 um, S&P grant for the senior services. And then we have a um, cash transfer where we're decreasing um, the fire excise tax fund for the Whiskey Creek Fire Department in which they're uh, transferring it into the regional dispatch and this is for their contribution for their operating expenses. And there's an increase in revenue and expenses of $154,347. This is for the uh, 2017 DWI distribution grant. An um, expense, uh, an increase in uh, revenue of $98,000 and an increase of $98,000 also for the 2017 DWI grant. Um, then there's a $750 increase to the franchise, uh, franchise fees uh, fund, and this is to purchase um, some video equipment. And uh, we've increased a cash transfer of $69,280 um, in the runway rehab. Um, this is a grant for the mailing and inlay at the airport runway. We've also increased revenue of $2 million. $2,559,408 and expenses increased by $2,621,187. And then um, there's a trans transfer de decrease, uh, which is transferring out into the general fund for the, uh, again, for that uh, motor grader, I'm sorry, not the motor grader, the um, the sheriff's department, uh, they replaced the motor at one of their units. And then there's an increase in revenue um, and expenses of $125,000. And this is for a portable digital x-ray machine for a Gila Regional Medical Center. And then there's a uh, cash transfer out from the airport fund into the airport grant for that uh, million and inlay project of $69,280. And then um, there's an increase in revenue of $2,500 for regional dispatch, which is coming in from the Whiskey Creek Fire Department. So the uh, grand total of increases in uh, cash transfer, we have $77,780 increase, $77,780 decrease, an increase in revenues of $4,586,664.64. An increase in expenditures of four million seven hundred twenty-one thousand six hundred eighty-nine dollars and sixty-four cents, and we have a uh, decrease in expenses of seven hundred forty-seven seventy-four thousand seven hundred and eighty dollars. So that's the total. So. To take all that and put it back down into layman's terms, about uh, 77,000 came out of 
county monies. By far and away, the largest amount of that was the airport total, which was around 95%, 94% of that, and that was the match out of the airport fund to redo the runway. Correct. And that, uh, other than that, the revenues and expenditures um, matched with new revenue and new expenditures? Yes. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion. We approve resolution number R-16-50. Second. Motion is second to approve R-16-50. R is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, St. Fox, say aye. 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 Motion passes. Okay, approve or disapprove resolution R1651, a resolution with the Grant County Board of Commissioners to relinquish the Grant County Senior Program to Hidalgo Medical Services. Madam Chairman, I mean, Madam Manager. You want a new job? Good okay, job. Yeah, it's a demotion. <laughs> Um, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, um, this is a resolution to relinquish the Grant County Senior Programs to Hidalgo Medical Services. Um, just a bit of brief history. Um, one of the things that was brought to my attention probably in the first couple weeks um, in my tenure here was the need um, of our seniors in, in this county. Um, currently, the county... Um, took over a contract from another private um, contractor back in, I think, 2009, um, whenever they um, basically abandoned their contract and there was no one to um, take over the senior services. So the county has acted in that role over the last few years. One of the things we discovered when we looked at it, there's a lot more programs that are available through um, the um, non-metro area agency on um, aging, which is the one that funds these programs. And the county does, does not have the resources, the expertise to, to be able to expand those programs. So I began having conversations with um, the area um, agency on aging to the mouthful to see um, about a year ago, um, looking into what could we do to expand these services and to improve these services. And um, one of the uh, conversations I had was um, the availability of a private contractor that could do a better job of providing these services than, than the county could. Um, we explored a few options. Um, one of the ones that rose to the top of the list was HMS. They currently provide, um, they manage the, uh, the program in Hildago County and do a very good job there. Um, it was, it's one of the um, programs that actually was suggested that we take a look at to maybe pattern ours after if we chose to, to continue continue on managing the program. Um, probably for the last, I would say, six or eight months, we've been in discussions with HMS, reached out to them to see if they were interested in, in taking on the program, and, and they agreed to take a look at it. They've done... Um, a very extensive due diligence and looked at the program. We've provided budgets for the last several years, inventory. Um, they've taken a look at our audits. We've discussed the pros and cons of, of our challenges in, in running the program. They felt that taking this program on um, fell within um, their scope and their mission of uh, providing services to the residents in Grant County. And their board of directors at their last board meeting in September, you know, so they agreed to, to take the program on. So um, what uh, the, the uh, area agency on aging will require is um, a contractor such as HMS to accept the program. The county then has to relinquish the program. There will be a transition period um, of where we um, transition assets, enter into agreements to utilize the facilities that the county owns. HMS will also have to enter into agreements with the town of Surf City and the village of Santa Clara to, um, to utilize their buildings. Um, we'll have to do a transition plan for the employees and we hope to have this all accomplished in the next few months and have HMS uh, take the program over as of January 1, 2017. Um, I think this is a great opportunity for a partnership. Um, Dan and I have had extensive conversations about how we can work together. Um, we've looked at um, the county budgets to offer some 
assistance with the startup costs to help them get on their feet and, and move the program forward. They have some really great ideas for expanding um, the services. Um, they have the expertise currently to do that, and I would um, strongly suggest that you agree to do this because I think it's a win-win for everyone and most of all our, our senior population that, that deserves a higher level of services than we've been able to provide. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I just want to thank you for working so hard on this. I know we've been discussing this for quite a while with the previous manager and, and now with yourself. And thank you very much for, for getting out there and, and working on this. But I do have a concern on, on the uh, on the employees. I mean, are they going to keep all the employees? Um, I know right now they're considered part-time county employees. They are part-time county um, employees who are, uh, they fall under the category of grant-funded employees. They work mm -hmm. under um, a contract that states that they are grant-funded employees. And um, HMS should have their transition plan um, to me in the next week or so. But what it, what it appears to be is that um, all of the grant count, current Grant County employees will have the opportunity to apply for their positions um, and go through an interview process. They will open it up to everyone. They will automatically transfer the employees over. Um, they will be doing some restructuring. There could be additional positions. They could cut the positions. That's, um, that I haven't seen their transition plan currently, but they are looking at expanding the services that Just they're currently providing. These people have been so dedicated to us for all these years, and, and uh, I'd, I'd like to see if something in the plan stating that they would be considered for these positions. Um, it will be considered. Yeah, well, I mean, but, uh, I'd, I'd like to see, I guess I should rephrase that, put back into those positions and uh, give them that chance because they, they've been with us for so long and they've done a good job. And, I mean, we've cut to bare minimums as, as we've gone through the process. I mean, we've been, I've been here almost six years now, and uh, we've done everything we can to uh, to provide everything we could as a county. And, and that's why that's why we we're, we're looking ahead to transfer them out somewhere else, if, you know, for better services. But uh, these people have dedicated a lot of time to, to the county and, and done a lot for us. We appreciate them. Well, you know, and Shirley knows when she came aboard and then whenever Don was here is one of my concerns because of I'm considered a Q-tip. I was told the other day, and I said, what's a Q-tip? And he says, white hair and white shoes. But uh, I've been concerned about the programs that we have in our community for our seniors for quite some time. And uh, Charlene and I have had these discussions, and she's always tried to support me as much as she can. And when we started, when she started talking about uh, HMS, uh, I was very pleased because uh, you know, we're dealing with, I'm dealing with, and so is the county dealing with HMS as far as two costs is concerned. And uh, they are very good at what they do. And and I agree with what uh, Commissioner Ronalds is saying as far as these employees being excellent and being dedicated to the services of the, se of the uh, seniors in this area. But I don't think in any way we should start putting caps on uh, HMS as far as saying you have to do it the way we want you to do it or else. As long as they're providing your services and, and doing a good job, then I think it's going to be up to them to make that determination. I don't know if they'd want to enter into an agreement like that, but that's going to be up to them. Well, and I'm just, I'm just totally, I'm totally for these, lab this, these labors that have been busting it for us for yeah. so long. And, I agree. And uh, I, I just like to see if we can do everything we can to, to try and get them transferred over. Thank you. And get a motion. Motion to approve resolution R1651. Second. The motion is second to approve R1651. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Approve or disapprove resolution number R1652, adopting Grant County governmental conduct policy. I have one amendment I would like to make to the policy on page. 7 of 10, section 7.1, item C, currently as stated, commissioners shall not disclose privileged information acquired in a closed session or other confidential meeting or discussion without the explicit authorization of the county body after consultation with the county attorney. Um, I move to amend by striking the word commissioner 
and adding the words public officers. Which we are. Which the the uh, definition of public officers is in the front of this document. Mm -hmm. And it means any elected or appointed official or employee of a state agency or local government agency who receives compensation in the form of salary or is eligible for per diem or mileage. Yes, so, sure. yes. Can I add one thing? In that definition, it says that it's defining public officer or employee. So mm -hmm. a, a public officer means any elected or appointed official. It wouldn't actually include employees. Right. I just wanted to clarify that. Can I get a second on that motion? Second. The motion is second on the amendment, striking commissioners and adding public officers. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, saying five, saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Now you can go ahead and do it. Thank you, Mr. Uh, we've been talking about this off and on for quite some time, uh, adopting a, a governmental conduct policy, <clears throat> mainly in light of uh, the Governmental Conduct Act, which is uh, under NMSA 1016-1. Um, you just happen to be referenced today in this document. Yeah, um, <laughs> you're probably already familiar from the, with this um, because you've been with the county for a while. Um, the legislature adopted uh, an act uh, giving you all uh, uh, mandates on how you will uh, you know, uh, behave as government officials. Um, it also does apply to, in some instances, to uh, governmental employees, um, such as myself, uh, and of course elected and department heads. Uh, and it sets out things such as, you know, th there's really obvious things. Don't take money from the public, uh, you know, outside of your salary um, for services. Things, things that are very obvious. Um, so what we're doing is what many other counties have done is we're putting it right in front of you. And um, probably 90% of this and all of the portions that apply to the employees as opposed to uh, elected, or excuse me, non-department heads and elected officials, all the portions that apply to those employees come directly from the statutes. Um, and then there's a section on the commissioners and electeds that I'm sure you've seen uh, in addition. So it, we're not applying any uh, additional policies to our employees that is not coming from statute that's already there. Um, I don't know if the union had any concerns. We sent the policy out to the union and the electeds and the department heads to ask for any feedback. I have not received any. I don't think Charlie has. Um, okay. I think it's a good idea to put the policy directly in front of you all, the electeds, the employees, so that they know up front um, what they can do and what they can't do. This is a good group of commissioners and electeds. They know that you can't go into a, uh, into a closed session, talk about uh, an employee's issues, and come out and give the press the information. They know they can't take Dallas Cowboy tickets for uh, approving a certain contractor. We're well aware of that. Writing it down, there's nothing wrong with writing it down so the public has faith in what, what we agree to. Yeah, so. there, there are some things that you <clears throat> that may not occur to you. For instance, sometimes if you uh, there are disclosures required of elected officials that they may not know about that you need to file with the clerk's office. I think this will put it right in front of you so that you'll have that information. And then you can always come and talk with me if you have a question and we can, you know, sort through the law together. But um, mm -hmm. so there are some things that may not jump out at you. But if our legislature did this well, we wouldn't have as many problems as we do in the next Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second to approve resolution R1652. Is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, say five, say nine. Aye. Motion passes. Bids and requests for proposals submit, approve or disapprove RFP 1602, Grant County Detention Center, Comprehensive Medical, Mental, and Ancillary Health Care Services. Madam Manager. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, um, it's time to release an RFP for uh, comprehensive inmate medical services. Um, we attempted to um, 
expand our current services. Unfortunately, um, our scope of work was entirely um, too big for our pocketbook. Um, the cost came in um, way beyond our budget, so we need to go back and we look at that scope and figure out how we can uh, continue to meet the level of care required. And um, we, we do need to provide some expansion of services, but maybe we are a little overzealous. Um, we do have an issue with this RFP. There was a discrepancy in the bid specs and the legal notes that was published in regards to a uh, mandatory pre-bid um, site visit in the um, detention center. As a result of that um, discrepancy, I am going to recommend that we reject this bid in lieu of that. Um, and we will rewrite this and do a better job of dying our eyes and crossing our T's and release it again in the future. But due to that discrepancy, um, I anticipate a protest and um, would agree with the potential protest that is out there. So. Can I get a motion to reject the RFP? Sir, I'd like to make a motion to re reject RFP 1602. Second. The motion is second to reject RFP 1602. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, for signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Approve or disapprove bid B1602, constructing improvements to the Fleming Tank and Wind Canyon Drive. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, uh, we received two bids for the uh, Wind Canyon um, Assessment District improvements. Um, we received a bid from Fowler Brothers in the amount of including gross receipts tax of $71,223.39. I uh, received a second bid from Southwest Concrete and Paving in the amount of $303,703.13. We have a recommendation from the road superintendent to award the bid to uh, the apparent low bearer of Fowler Brothers in the amount of $71,223.39. And this will be having the county road department uh, construct the low water crossings and install the culverts. And that was an attempt to, to save some money to to the residents of that subdivision. So that's our recommendation. Okay. Motion to approve a bid B1602 for constructing the improvements to Fleming Tank and Wind Canyon Drive to the little bit of, of Fowler's Brothers. Second. A motion is second to approve B1602 to Fowler Brothers construction. Is there any discussion on that motion? No, I just, once again, always good to see Frank, who has been uh, stellar in this. He is a resident uh, from that area and stays in touch with me and, and, and also with our manager. And been a, a, it's been great working with you, Frank. And so your, your, your uh, leadership in that area is well taken, and we appreciate you. Any other discussion? No, Seeing none, all those in favor, second by the saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Approve or disapprove bid B1604, North Hurley Road Improvements. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, uh, we also recently uh, released an RFP for the North Hurley Road Improvements. This is a colonial project. Uh, the, uh, the bid included several alternates. I will read uh, the, the total amounts and then the, the recommended um, award. We received a bid from Southwest Concrete and Paving uh, for a total of $991,235.50. Um, let me read it off of this one. So um, the three responses, including the base bid and alternates one, two, and three, let me start with Morrow Enterprises in the amount of $928,930.33. Dimming Excavation in the amount of $955,046.10. Southwest Concrete and Paving in the amount of $991,235.50. The, uh, the bid plus the alternates is more than our grant award. So our recommendation is to award the base bid, the, the apparent low bidder of borrowed enterprises in the amount of $554,926.35. So move Mr. Chairman. Second. Motion is second to, um, to approve bid B1604 to Morrow 
Kentucky Enterprises. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, saying five, say aye. 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 Motion passes. At this time, I ask for a motion to recess the Grant County Board of County Commissioners. So moved. Second. Call to order the Grant County Indigent Hospital and Health Care Claims Board. The first item on the agenda is approve or disapprove September 2016 health plan claims in the amount of $7,448. So moved. Second. So motion is second to approve the two September 2016 health plan claims in the amount of $7,448.33. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Can I get a motion to adjourn the Grant County Indigent Hospital Health Care? Second. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Call back to order the Grant County Board of Commissioners. At this time, we'll stand for county and elected official reports. Uh, Brian, I'm going to let you go first because I know you're a busy guy. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair, Commissioners. Good morning. I'd like to just take a minute or two to speak about one of the most important initiatives Gila Regional Medical Center is involved in at this point, uh, which is our Healthy Hospital, Healthy Community Initiative. The outcome of that initiative was obviously a request for support from our county commissioners to include a question on our ballot for November 8th regarding uh, approval or disapproval of a four mill property tax levy. I want you all to know that I've been out talking to many groups in the community. Uh, Appreciate our, our county assessor out there too in clarifying these kind of complex calculations on, on millage and mill levies and, and the impact for our citizens. Uh, we've been talking to everybody for the purpose of providing them with the information they need to make the most informed decision at the ballot box. We're not, we're not out there uh, trying to convince others uh, or those kind of things. We want to arm people with information to make the most appropriate decision. We just wanted to remind everybody that just like every other uh, agency, healthcare is, is extremely challenged over these past several years. Funding continues to be cut. And uh, our goal, obviously, as a Grant County owned hospital, is to provide the best services possible for our citizens. We've worked very hard at that, and you all know by now recently that recognition by Centers of Medicare and Medicaid as a four star quality hospital. We're very proud of that work. Uh, but more than that, we're proud to be able to provide that service to our community. The main goal of this initiative is just that to keep our county's four-star quality close to home. We know that this is a real tax. We know that this raises taxes on people during a hard time. We're asking people, though, to look at that and weigh out the challenges that would come if Heal Regional was not able to replace key pieces of equipment and our citizens needed to then travel outside of Grant County, possibly to Las Cruces for services, what would that cost be? So we know that this is a hard decision to weigh out. We also know that with the issues and challenges that with state funding, more and more are counties and county citizens being put in a position to have to decide what they want as a county. How much education, uh, how much uh, road improvement are you, do you want? How much police, fire, health care? So these are hard decisions and we understand that. We're simply putting information out to help people on this uh, mill levy decision. We have an, uh, we want you to know that we have an open house today at Heal Regional in our courtyard at noon. Uh, we're celebrating our four star quality award and also uh, doing a small state of the hospital address where we'll be able to answer any and all questions about the hospital and of course specifically about the mill levy. So I just wanted to take that moment uh, to just uh, remind everyone uh, we were out there talking about it. We're on the radio, Cats TV. If anybody has any questions, though, about the mill levy, we have, they can come to our website. We have a lot of information there. They can call me. They can email me. I'd be happy to talk to or sit down with anyone and let them know uh, our perspective on this to help them make their decision. And at this time, I'd like to stand for any questions you may have or, or questions that your constituents may have out in the community. Well, just I, I know that I've had people 
call me and come up to me and ask me about it. Uh, I've discussed it and also uh, have given your name and number, and um, a few of them have got back to me saying that you answered their questions, and uh, so I appreciate that being available. Because I know you're a busy man, but you've always made yourself available to the public. So uh, I appreciate that and would ask you to continue. Thank you. Mr. Thank you. You know, Brian, this, this onslaught has been going on now for f right at four years. Um, yeah, the training's been coming down the tracks. It started with the Portable Health Care Act, and uh, we were told it was going to be trickle down health care. I think we've heard that in the 80s, and it didn't work then, it didn't work now. Um, we just received a 29% increase in our health care insurance. Um, that was, it was supposed to get cheaper when more people got insured. That didn't work. Our hospital, uh, the viability of our hospital has been waning for the last three or four years. Um, I don't see that changing. So we have to change in our in our area. We either take care of ourselves or we, we have to have certain services go away. You, you take care of yourself or those things will go away. So um, I had kind of been on the fence on this. I thought you might know, have asked for just a little much. Uh, I told you that on the day you asked. Um, I've come to the conclusion that I'm supporting this, and I'm supporting it publicly. So I appreciate you taking your, you and your board taking the, uh, the position and convincing me over the last few weeks uh, to do this. So thank you very much. Thank you so much for your support. You bet. Appreciate it. Anything else? I just totally agree. Thank you very much for everything you do. We've, um, I've actually been to the hospital a few times this last couple of months and personally had to use it. So I appreciate the the service that that you all provide, and uh, you know, hopefully we can continue to provide every service that we've got. And thank you very much for what you do. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Brian. Okay, we'll move over to Mike. Item number one is a continuation uh, of the policies. Item number two, we have a detention update. We have um, no vacancies currently at the facility. Item number three, the status remains the same. On our training report, Corporal Chapel attended first line supervision training course. Deputy Administrator Andazola and Sergeant Fisher attended the PREA training in Rio Doso. Corporal Rodriguez and Officer Martinez completed their 40 hours in service training. Refresher training, Corporal Rodriguez, Officer Martinez, Officer Rios, and Officer Anderson completed their in-service OC and uh, control force training. And the newly hired officers have completed phase one of their classroom training and are now assigned to an FTO officer and have been placed on the shift, and they're doing very well. Uh, item number five on our intervention, the inmate support program. Uh, the committee did go down to Las Cruces. Uh, there were several of us that went down. Uh, we have a, we got an insight from the Las Cruces Police Department on how uh, their crisis intervention team is working. Uh, they did give us some insight on how they developed the team and some funding sources. We brought back that information. We met yesterday with uh, some of the committee members. Um, we uh, what we plan on doing is meeting again within the next couple of weeks. Uh, we're going to put together some of the information. We're going to also um, have one of the officers that oversees the team and implements the team. Uh, we're going to have him on a conference call, and we're going to continue uh, with the discussions on the implementing of the team. So hopefully it's going to take a lot of work, but I think we can probably get it done. So we're going to be working on that within the next couple of weeks. Item number six on the uh, recognition of work program. Officer Van Natter has been nominated as employee of the month for September. Officer Van Natter is recognized for his dedication to the Grant County Detention Center. Officer Van Natter has accepted acting supervisor duties. Uh, when occasions he's required to be a supervisor on graveyard shift and has done very well in that capacity. And Officer Van Natter continues to be a role model for the rest of the officers. Item number seven on our detention statistics. Uh, Grant County Detention Facility average daily population for October 13th is 88, which is the same as last month. High population males is 75, three more than last month. High population females is 28, one less than last month. Currently for October 13th, 2016, there were 81 inmates booked into the facility. 
the one-year statistics from October 15, 2015 to October 13, 2016. The average daily population at that time confined in the facility was 74. Average length of stay for this reporting period is 38.84 days. And also provided for you again is the ARC capacity report, which is a breakdown of the facilities, uh, of the facilities holding capacity by pod, and the CJ 5DA survey of inmates, uh, jail inmates confinement report. Any questions on those two reports? Okay. Uh, statistics show an increase in activity as compared to last month. Item number eight on our monthly agency arrest totals for September 2016. Silver City Police Department had 89, Grant County Sheriff Department had 29, New Mexico State Police 14, Baird Police 14, Santa Clara 6, Hurley 6, Western New Mexico Police had 1, New Mexico Game and Fish had 1, um, and the detention center held 7 prisoners for the Dalgo County during the month of September. Item number nine, the detention facility conducted 39 district court transports. We conducted 22 magistrate court division one transports. Division two, they had four transports. Silver City Municipal Court was one, and the rest of the uh, municipal courts had zero. Medical transport during this reporting period totaled nine. So the total number of transports equals 75 as compared to 64 for last month. Probation violations, we had 21. We had one parole violation, uh, probation violation inmates awaiting transport to facility. At this time, we have three. I believe we got three more within the last couple of days. And the average time in judgment for sentencing is uh, four transport is approximately 30 days. Total inmate short with warrants, 47. And the total number of special management inmates on October 13th equaled nine. My report, sir. Very much. Any questions for Mike? Okay. Thank you very much, Mike. Randy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, real quick, uh, now that uh, Cora Caminos has just gone into their new fiscal year in October, I, I wanted the director Kim Dominguez to come up and give a, a, a brief a summary of uh, 2016's uh, uh, report on, on Cora Caminos. So, if you want to come up and just uh, talk about the program and where we're at moving forward, please. Good morning, Mr. Chair, Commissioners. Um, as Randy mentioned, we just finished. Sorry? It's on. Sorry. Better? Yeah. Okay. Um, we just wrapped up our fiscal year 2016 on September 30th. Um, we finished the year at just over 98,000 passengers, which is down about 15,000 passengers from last year. Um, this wasn't unexpected due to the route cuts we were required to make to um, align our budget and, and, and get within our budget. Um, as far as the budget, we don't have final numbers yet, um, but as with last year, we, we are going to be coming in under budget um, for the second year. Um, as predicted, our federal funding has been cut somewhat. Um, which we've discussed in the past at board meetings and things. Um, we haven't been able to secure the cash match to leverage all that we had been awarded. So we're seeing um, not significant cuts in our federal budget. Um, it, there won't be any more route cuts as a result. We had already planned for the federal cutbacks. We know it was coming. So we don't foresee any, any additional route cutbacks. Um, we're pretty steady there. Um, other than that, we've had a we've had a good year. Everything settled down. We've I think we've finally gotten over all of our speed bumps, and and we're running running on track. Just it's such an essential part to our county now. Cote Caminos is really counted by counted on by a lot of people. So thank you all very much for, for working so hard to get us a good budget. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and, and, excuse me, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, along those lines, you know, we, we finally uh, have a web page uh, that people can go to. It's going to help us in a sense of during the winter time when, when routes can't be run or when bus, buses aren't going to run in because of bad weather, uh, information is needed. We did get a new bus this year. Um, we're hoping to look in the future to continue that, that process, uh, working with our agencies, which is Luna, Hidalgo, Grant County, Silver City, um, City of Lordsburg. 
words. Uh, so it's all coming together. I, I think Kim has done a good job in the past year. As you know, there was a lot of concerns about the budget and, and how we were moving along with that. And I think we've got it under control. We're going to continue to work toward uh, better service for our community and the people that need that need, need the bus system. So on top of that, so I, I want to thank her for that. So thank you. Um, on some other notes real quick during my report, I, I think you're okay. Thank you. Um, uh, we'll go into the DWI. As you know, there was a special session. Uh, there was more money cut uh, from the DWI program. Uh, uh, I wanted Cindy to be here as well, but she was she had another commitment. Uh, her initial distribution was about 185,000. It was cut uh, to 154,000. Um, so that that was a big hit to her. Uh, she had some surplus, which was she didn't have a, a few staff members. She was able to hold on to about 16,000. She was not able to keep that. They took that away. Uh, initially, uh, Senate Bill 2 called for another $3.6 million in cuts. Uh, as we just heard today, I believe the governor signed that. Uh, with that, uh, there's going to be some more cuts to, DWI, I mean, to the DWI program, which may be in Cota Cantinas. Uh, we're not sure, but that would be another 30000 on top of the one. Uh, the 3.6 would be on top of the 1.6 they took out last year. So it had been a big hit to the DWI program. I think Cindy's working hard uh, to try to stay within our budget obviously as well uh, but there are going to be some errors that we're going to have to look at moving forward um, so that's that's just uh, that's the way it is with the, the budget crunch uh, from the state um, some of the some of the things we're going to have to look at is is what programs are working uh, and how we're going to cut those in. and hopefully it won't be with layoffs and you know the DWI program as you all know Randy has been a great success in Grand County and uh, you know, the cutting of the funding on that, I have a real concern, real concern, because we're talking about lives. And uh, it's, it's not maybe, it's, it's, it's really critical. And uh, Cindy has made use, uh, well used with your direction and such, of uh, all the dollars being spent. Uh, I know we have the, in my opinion, the, the best pro program in the state of New Mexico. And uh, those programs have saved lives. So yeah, and, and yes, sir, Mr. Chairman and, and Commissioner Hall, uh, that's that's right. And last year, 1.6 million was taken out of DWI for the drug court. So, you know, no matter how you twist it and how you turn it, I mean, it's all intertwined with each other. Whether it be the drug court, whether it be WI, whether it be Tucasa, I mean, they're all going to play a role uh, in in this whole uh, you know funding effort. And I think we're just going to have to find ways to to better stretch the, the dollars. And I think Cindy's doing that, and she's she's doing her best to try. She'll do a good job. Thank you. And uh, so I'll go to public works. You know, the airport, uh, we just had an inspection with the fuel farm through the Mexico Environmental. Uh, we, we passed that with no issues whatsoever. So I want to thank James Salgado and, and Justin out there. Uh, they finished the milling on the overlay project, uh, runway 826. Everything went good. They were a couple of days over, just uh, some equipment uh, problems, and they were able to get that done. Um, New runway markings, they were finished yesterday, so that, that has been done. Uh, the problem with that is it took some extra funding because of the, the fact that the, the actual project was cut back a little bit, but he was able to go to the to New Mexico DOT and get some funding for that. He worked with the FAA to allow us to get that funding, um, which which helped us paint it, uh, help the painting project uh, of the runway. The new AWOS system has been working great. We put that up. Uh, he's working on getting funding to install a new emergency generator for the for the lights. That's part of uh, the requirements, and so he's working on a grant to do that. Uh, any questions on the airport? Uh, everything seems to be working well. There has been some delays, but uh, it's. I think the uh, Phoenix airport is going through the same exact thing we just went through on a bigger, massive scale. So that's holding the we'll back a little bit as well, uh, getting in and out of the Phoenix airport. Uh, at the courthouse, three new HVAC units hopefully will be installed in the next couple of weeks. Uh, he has worked with PC Auto Automotive out of El Paso to get this work done. Uh, once the project's done, he's going to work on trying to get the roof done. Uh, so it's a continuing project with the building that's, that shows some age. But, uh, you know, we did the electrical last year, and so now the HVACs and some of the issues we had with heating and cooling will be done. Uh, 
The fair last month uh, went pretty well. We didn't have any major is issues with that, as far as I know, um, like we had last year. Uh, continuing to get the facilities up and running, we're doing that transition from winter to from summer to winter now. So we're cutting down the coolers and looking at reheating everything and making sure that uh, uh, those are all working properly. Um, from the fire side, I was a little late today. I uh, apologize for that. I met with uh, Doug Boykin, State Forestry, and the Forest Service. They have a uh, every five years they have a, a meeting to the to look at the agency's collaboration uh, with local government, uh, the Forest Service, and State Forestry. And they, they asked me some questions about you know how we went about collaborating with them. And so that that was a pretty good um, uh, meeting with them, looking at more funding maybe to, to give to the local fire departments and uh, for equipment on the wildland fire side. To see WP and, and maybe another chipper. On that note, with the fire departments, I want to congratulate Tyrone. They were at the uh, fire expo in Socorro last week, uh, or last month, excuse me, and uh, they were they had some competitions over there. They were able to come out of there with around 30 trophies. They broke some state records with some of the competitions that were there. Um, so Michael Cox, great melee. Melee, Eloy Vasquez, Earl Hunter, Judy Goddard, uh, Shannon Ferris, Jack Jordan, Rudy Maldonado, and Gina Gregg. I want to congratulate them. They all came back with some trophies and some competitions that uh, hazmat, uh, donning and doffing their gear, which means putting it on and taking it off, uh, patient assessments and uh, airway assessments. So those are some of the competitions I want to thank them uh, uh, for their, their hard work and their training. And I think the training is paid off in that show. Other than that, uh, I don't think I have anything else unless you have any other questions, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, can you invite them to the next meeting? We need to give them some kind of <laughs> camera proclamation or something. Well, I, I think the chief and I are on awesome. Tyrone are working on something, and we'll get back Great. with you on that and see if we can't. Uh, but I did want to mention it because they, you know, a lot of them had to take vacation time and stuff out of their jobs to get over there to to the expo and they were able to do that. But it all turned out great as well because there is some competitions on the weekend. Uh, so um, I congratulate them as well. So unless you have any other questions, that's Professor, all I have. Good report. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for your Mr. Larsh. Chairman, Commissioners, thank you. Um, I'll start with Ducasa. Um, we were hoping to have the, the grant to approve today. Um, we don't, but I've received two emails since we've been sitting here. So I do know that uh, DFA and the local government division are working on it. I'm going to have to uh, respond to a few questions that they've got when we're done. Um, we're also waiting on the environmental uh, for approval and the uh, project manual bid documents. They, they're reviewing all of that. Um, so it, it's a slow process, but we are moving. Yes. Um, the uh, LS Mesa, uh, we, we awarded that last month, and the construction, they were supposed to do groundbreaking, I believe, Tuesday. I haven't been up there to see if they got that, but they should be moving forward on that one. Um, Santa Rita Fire Station, we're still finalizing uh, with the architect. Um, Randy and I have, uh, have dealt with him in the last couple of days, just a few questions here and there, and we should be getting ready to put that out to bid shortly. Um, solar for the county buildings. Um, we, we talked, or I talked last uh, last month about the feasibility study uh, with Triple H Solar. I do have Steve House with Triple H Solar set up to um, do a uh, small presentation to you guys on the uh, um, work session meeting next month. And uh, we've been looking into uh, LED retrofit, and um, right now we've got just a preliminary assessment uh, that could show about a 13 to a 15 month uh, return on investment on that, but, but that's an ongoing process. So, And then uh, new for Colonius this year, we do have to do a notice of intent. Um, just got that on Monday. I think it was Monday, maybe Tuesday. <laughs> um, so I'm working on that, and it's due November 11th. So it gave us a short window in there, but uh, working on that right now. And I will be attending the uh, master plan for the forest uh, meeting. That's going to be held November 2nd at the Global Resources Center, a Western, 4 p.m. So if uh, any of you have any comments or questions or anything that you want me to, to address, please let me know um, prior to that. Um, I'll, I'll see what I can do for you. And I guess the last thing is uh, um, 
Commissioner Ramos, and I've already discussed this a little bit. I've discussed it with uh, um, County Manager uh, Webb. I attended a two half-day uh, tours of the um, Sholo and Lakeside Pine Top uh, effluent marshes and their wastewater treatment plants. Uh, that was Monday and Tuesday this week, and, and I'll be getting with uh, Commissioner Ramos on that. That kind of goes into play with uh, um, who he's looking at there in um, uh, Twin Sisters Creek with the uh, Baird wastewater treatment plant. So if you have any questions. Questions? No, I'll make a comment on the forest in just a little bit. Right, good morning. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. you. Know, I, 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 the last three meetings, I think, I've, I've commented the work that really great to have uh, Misha on board. Uh, he's a great asset to our organization, and he has been to me. Uh, being someone that does a lot of footwork and has a lot of knowledge, and uh, it's amazing uh, the areas that you have knowledge on. So you're a great asset to the community and to the county. Thank you very much. Anything further? Okay, we'll move to elected. Uh, Chair? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Jones, I don't have much to report other than uh, we had an extremely busy month in September. We had uh, 400 and, I mean, 541 calls for service, so it kept my staff pretty busy for the month of September. Now we're hoping that winter's coming. Hopefully it'll slow down. Um, we've always prayed for that, and it usually never happens, but we're trying to prepare for it. Uh, we are getting ready for the Halloween um, holiday coming up uh, in, here in a couple of weeks. I uh, just want to encourage the public to be alert and aware of all our little ones out there that are going to be trick-or-treating, um, everything going on, just be observant and, and uh, ask the parents to keep their kids pretty uh, close. Um, a lot of the stuff that's going on in the nation in regards to the clown stuff uh, going around them, um, we're going to have extra patrols out and, and be out visible in heavily populated trick-or-treating areas. So I just want to ask the public to be a little more observant um, and report anything suspicious. Uh, we'll be more than happy to go out and check on it. Um, and I want to encourage the community to continue to be um, observing and report anything that's going on. It's not a bother to us. That's what we're getting paid to do, uh, to go out there and, and um, look into what they're reporting. So I just encourage the community to continue to work with us and keep uh, keep us in their thoughts and prayers. Uh, everything so far has slowed down, um, but we're continuing to work. And I want to thank my staff for what they do. They've been really busy and continuing to provide the best professional service that we can with the resources that we have and what we uh, continue to do. So, you know, I want to thank the community for that. We have had a lot of uh, organizations come in, send send gifts, send uh, treats for the deputies, and, you know, just to thank us. And, and uh, we really appreciate that. I think that shows uh, the support from the community. So I just want to thank them, but I really do want to thank my staff for what they do. And other than that, I have nothing else to report unless you have any questions. Sure, have you had any kind of, you know, we've had these, this clown stuff going around the country. <laughs> have we had any of that in this area? There Not in this area that we have had any reports of, but um, they're, they're, I've heard that Albuquerque has had some. Right. Uh, so it's, it's, it's in New Mexico. I don't know if it's, I mean, a lot of it is going to be copycats just trying to, to be this, but uh, I know that, that it's, it's, it's public and it's, it's out there. Uh, so Halloween's around the corner, and we'll see what that turns out to be when, when it happens. I know your officers are vigilant, so I feel comfortable that you'll take care of it. Thank you. Well, I'd just like to say thank you to the manager for accepting her, her contract and accepting that. I was asking for you. I'm sorry. I thought you were chair. You put it in the music. <laughs> I guess I'll, I'll go ahead and do that first. But no, I don't I don't have any questions. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Mr. Assessor. Mr. Chairman, board members, elected officials, uh, department heads, and guests, I would like to start off with a uh, happy birthday, Judge. And uh, I bet you just turned 49 or something like that. I don't know. Okay. All right. I would like to acknowledge first that, uh, and I was talking to Mike about this, that uh, we went to Las Vegas, Nevada for the World Master Championship for the uh, SSUSA Senior Softball 55, Divi uh, 55 Division AA. And uh, we came up short for the uh, championship of the world. We lost to a team from Iowa. 
There were the antique Iowa, so we lost twice, so we fell kind of short on that. So, Mike, I'll see you up there the next time. For starters, I want to thank my staff. I really, uh, I really appreciate them. Uh, they, uh, they've done such a good job during the reappraisal. Uh, now we're getting ready for sending out a rendition form for the personal property, manufactured homes, livestock, and so on. So uh, that's going to be probably hitting probably by by uh, December. And I know November, once the tax bills go out, we're going to be pretty pretty busy also. Uh, right now, the assessor's affiliate are meeting up in Taos and uh, a lot of important issues and resolutions. However, I decided to stay here. Uh, we did do a lot of discussion about the four meals for the hospital, so I'm pretty much on call on that because I do get a lot of phone calls and uh, I've been attending just about every every organization just to, just to clarify if there's any questions on what's going on. We're working on building permits. We only have until the last of the uh, end of the year before we can put it on for the year 2017. Uh, Misty and I and um, Brown and Gary, uh, Matthew Myers, uh, and uh, and Gabe uh, Grado, we've been really diligent on trying to get this done before the end of the year. Uh, we're still playing catch up on our sales ratios. Uh, we have a wonderful breakdown on our, our field visits, our data entry, and we're also looking into the ag values with our field visits. Uh, Lorraine Zunich, Lorraine Zunich has just passed her probation, and uh, she's actually creating all our models for appraisals and uh, helping out with uh, just about everything in that office. We do go out in the field, uh, doing some field uh, reviews, and she has been a wonderful person working there in the assessor's office. We did hire a young lady by the name of Denisha Lucero and, uh, for an appraiser's one position, and she's already in very intense training, not only on field visits, but also uh, entering data for our models on our title. Uh, Tyler Technology and uh, she handles the public very very well and I can't believe how much she has picked up within the few uh, weeks that she's been working in the assessor's office. I'm very blessed to have her and uh, I will be doing a lot of the training out in the field uh, with her and the rest of my, my employees. Training, 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 quality control. That's what we have to uh, take care of there in the assessor's office because we've been finding a lot of issues with the uh, Tyler technology with the assessor's eagle and uh, we are trying to uh, iron all that out. Uh, I do thank uh, my chief appraiser by the name of Misty Trujillo. She actually uh, rolled over our tax rolls to uh, the treasurer and uh, Steve was very instrumental and very helpful in a lot of these things. So. Uh, uh, we valued uh, the net taxable value was 841 million, and it ended up at about 11.3 million on the on the budget itself. We did have a complete breakdown on our on our warrant, and uh, Steve went ahead and got that, uh, sent the information up to the uh, to property tax division. There was the small issue on state assessed properties; it was uh, corrected, and uh, it was. Uh, very smooth sailing, uh, taking care of rolling over the tax rolls. We had a little bit of issue with the TIF, and uh, maybe later on, Steve, you can uh, elaborate on that. But uh, the town of Silver City adopted in 2015 the Metro Metropolitan Redevelopment Area, the MRE, and uh, it's under the Ordinance 12, uh, 1214. The Assessor's Office, Treasurer's Office, and the Tax Revenue Department was notified of this boundary area of the tax increment method should be applied in parcels within the area. The tax increment method is finally the Metropolitan Redevelopment Area Project Urban for Renewal called the TIF. And must be followed the requirements under the MMSA Section 3-60A-20 and 21. As the NMSA tax increment procedures of the assessor's office was identified the parcels within the areas of the, of the certified, have it certified to the county treasurer and the taxable values of the properties for the base year of 2015. The difference between the taxable value of 2015 and 2016 is only net new, something that has not been placed on the tax rolls, not valuation maintenance, but net new. The tax collection from the new values is the amount that the taxes will be put on a separate account for the town of Silver City to redevelop the project within the designed areas in the MRA. There is no increase on the tax rate at all. A change, however, has been collected and will be distributed by the county treasurer's office. And uh, trying to get the uh, the authorities in the in our system was a little bit of a chore. But I do thank my chief deputy, uh, Jennifer Barraza. She did a really good job creating that.
Uh, I've been um, I've been attending. I've been asked to attend the Revenue Stabilization and Tax Policy Committee. Uh, attended in September because uh, they're doing tax reform not only on uh, gross receipt but also sales tax and property tax. Uh, in September 13th and 14th, we actually had seven assessors up there, and uh, we had to give a presentation to uh, to the committee about property tax. We just showed up there, and they just asked us, can you do a presentation? I said, well, okay, sure. So we did a presentation about property tax because they are in the process of doing tax reform. Uh, they did come up with a formula with a GRT and the uh, sales tax, and um, Representative Hendrick, he's actually working on it uh, on the last meeting that I went to. On the whiteboard, on the whiteboard session on the property tax, this is what they're thinking about doing, and uh, uh, I had uh, lunch with uh, Vice Chair uh, Cisneros, and uh, we're pretty much in growth on what we're going to be working on. For starters, we're going to remove, these are just the thoughts. This is not actually what's going to be happening, but uh, removing the 3% valuation cap permanent once the property is sold. This uh, cap, in, with this 3% uh, cap, uh, it is unconstitutional to remove the cap whatsoever, but um, it is in the process of being th thought out with the uh, Taxation Civilization uh, Committee. Facing a higher valuation cap for 7% or 10% over three years, and that's only occupancy only. Removing the valuation cap immediately, forcing all residential properties to be valued at current and correct levels. What has happened is that uh, when tax lightning hit up in Santa Fe, they actually placed that cap and uh, were really not current and correct. And the only thing we do by state statute is we have to increase the cap 3% per year. Grand County, uh, once I finally got all the data together within the last two years, we did not put the 3% cap last year or the year before. Finally, we did a complete studies where our percentages of the cap is within 30%. So there is quite a lot of room to increase the cap for the year 2017. And we're in the process on either doing the 3% cap or the 6% cap by statute by the state of New Mexico. We're also working on full disclosure. I think that's one of the biggest issues that uh, Senator uh, John Arthur Smith brought up that um, the assessor's office does not have the the tools, the proper tools on the non-residential side due to the fact that we're only partial disclosure. Uh, we're also going to meet probably next month so we can start writing up some bills where we're going to ask for full disclosure. And let me just elaborate on that. On the residential side, the uh, the grantor and the grantee has to sign an affidavit where it states how much prop how much they paid for the property, what date, legal description, if it's real property or personal property. In uh, non-residential, and we're talking vacant land or commercial properties, they don't have to sign off on an affidavit. So we actually let, literally beg, borrow, and I don't want to use the word steal, the information. However, we do get a lot of information from the internet and I thank my uh, appraiser um, uh, Matthew Myers where he really seeks a lot of this information out. So that's exactly what we're working on on the uh, ready for the session for the le legislative session for the year 2017 and I do stand for questions. Well, one more thing, um, Claudia if you need any information whatever you need I think you've done a sensational job on this um, uh, on this uh, deal with the Watershed District, and I'm so glad that you had the opportunity to see the actual uh, uh, forms that uh, the budgets and everything. And like I said, I was glad that it was all intact. And once again, if you need it, it's all there. And if anybody in the commission would like to take a look at any of this stuff, it's it's quite a lot of information. Thank you very much, and I do stand for questions. Oh, thanks. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> Commissioners. Um, as uh, the assessor alluded to, we have rolled over the 2016 tax roll. So as you see, our, our report looks a little pale with 0.69% uh, collected. However, I think that $40,000 already in the first, uh, without tax bills going actually going out yet, is actually pretty good. Uh, the majority of that is taxes paid in advance when there's a property sold 
we need to collect the taxes in advance to make sure that that's collected and um, various other things. Um, I kind of uh, took a different approach this time. Last last year, I gave you a report on the amount of taxes that were rolling off the tax the tenure rule uh, that that went came off. It wasn't a very impressive amount, about ten thousand dollars. It didn't change a whole lot this year. But I want to impress upon you guys, um, Commissioner Hall. A couple of years ago, you I, we requested for about the ninth or tenth year in a row another position in our office to address the delinquent taxes. I think this information here is very obvious, very self-fulfilling, if you will. We have $3.9 million outstanding countywide, 1.87, 1.9 million for the county. So I just want to let you know that we will be putting that position in our office for the next budget. I'm sorry you won't be here to vote on it, but, you know, that's one of those things that personal decisions. But we will be putting that uh, position, including that position. I think when everybody is having such a struggle to with their budgets to leave $3.9 million on the table is irresponsible from my office and from the commissioners as well. You know, we need to address that. So that's our main thrust. I, I do thank um, the assessor's chief deputy, as uh, Raul mentioned. Jennifer was very instrumental in creating this TIF area. Uh, it was a difficult situation. Uh, also, Misty Trujillo did a wonderful job in the rollover. We had issues. We kept going back and forth. You know, we worked on it, and, and we, we got it done. It took us about three days to get this done. But uh, finally, when, once we got it done, we were able to work with the Eagle Treasure and Eagle Assessor technical support to actually correct the tax rule after the fact to that where that TIF area is going to be very easy to, to manage and to do the distribution. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, it's as much work as it took, the town of Silver City will only get $2,900 if every bit of that tax is paid for that area for this year. So, you know, it's, it's kind of uh, one of those things, but that's what you have to, I guess, take the good with the bad. So um, we are also, uh, you know, within the boundaries of our, of our office, uh, we're, we're going to be accepting the uh, payments from the Hurley Water Association as recommended by the uh, auditors. And uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just... You know, we, we are at a point where we need to continue, you know, the progression in our office. You know, I, I do thank Charlene and everything for approving our budget this year for our equipment that we've received. We we're, we're, um, actually went out and, and got really good bids on the, the equipment and furniture that we have received. We haven't got it all yet, but... Anyway, so, um, you know, like I say, we, we, we still have a lot out there, and I think that we just need to, you know, get concentrate and get busy to get this all these funds in and, and uh, help out not only the county but the municipalities that have money outstanding. So I stand for any questions. No, I'd like to comment, because I don't know why you brought up my name, but uh, I won't. But if I was running your office, I wouldn't let $3 million sit on my desk. That's well, the, the only reason I addressed you is because you asked me to justify the position. And, and other positions have been created without justification, and that's just, that's just my comment. That's what I asked everyone to do. 
So there's the justification. Further questions? No. Okay. Rob. Thank you, Chairman Commissioners. Um, steady stream of voters in our office. Uh, we're averaging about 315 voters a day since last Tuesday, so things are looking good in our office, nice and steady, not too overwhelming for the staff. I do want to thank my staff. Um, we had a big, big, big uh, jump in voter registrations over the last couple of months. Uh, we're now sitting at 22,501 registered voters for the county. Um, staff did a phenomenal job of making sure that everybody that had submitted an uh, application by the 11th was registered and inputted into the system and are ready to go um, for the election day. Um, early voting does start in Baird this Saturday from 9 to 6. We've, we'll continue to vote early in our office, 8 to 5, Monday through Friday, for the rest of the month. And the November 5th date will be open in our office from uh, 8 to 5 as well. Uh, the one thing that we do want to stress is that uh, we do have voting convenience centers in Grant County. Um, the following locations are going to be open on Election Day from 7 to 7. The Tyrone Community Center, the Women's Club, the PA fire, uh, fire Department, the Administration Building, which is here, will be voting in this uh, room here, the National Guard Armory, the Baird Community Center, the Heritage Community Center, out at the Cliff High School, and the San Lorenzo Elementary School. Uh, one big announcement that we have that we're uh, pretty excited about, on election night, on 95.1 The Mix, we're going to be doing a live broadcast here. We're going to be doing election results, so not only will we be on the Internet, but we're going to be doing a live radio broadcast bringing you guys results. And uh, we've talked to some of the uh, elected officials that are, are sitting right now that you know to come in and, and sit in on the show a little bit and give a little bit of feedback and just to, to fill in some time because we, we expect the results to come in pretty quick. So it's going to be a two-hour two hour radio show and we hope to have listeners listen on that because they're going to be getting exclusive uh, results there. We'll, we'll give them the results before we upload them to Secretary of State. So uh, that's something that we've been been working on for a little bit of, of uh, time now. Uh, we saw an opportunity now that the, the mix has a, a DJ here that's local. We now can look at them and see ho hopefully this this is something that is going to do something some good for the community because we've been we've people have been asking for that kind of service but we've never had a radio station that actually has the manpower or is local enough to provide those services for us so on that on that night you can tune into the radio and actually get uh, results and we're gonna we're gonna. Um, the way we've formatted the program is that we're going to be looking at our local races more than anything, and uh, hopefully that, that's something that's going to be a positive for us. Thank Other you. than that, that's all I have. Questions? My turn. Your turn. <laughs> Again, <laughs> deja vu. I'd like to just thank uh, uh, Charlene and uh, Abby for accepting their contracts and, and not uh, pushing so hard, knowing our, our budget situation and knowing that uh, we're going to have a 20, 29 percent increase in, in health insurance uh, costs, so it's it's uh, that's that really scares the heck out of me. You know, I, I wasn't here the last meeting, and, and I, I apologize. At some of us, I mean, we do we got to, we do got to work, so I appreciate you uh, you having the meeting without me. Um, congrats to all the fair participants. Uh, like every year, I mean, it's good good to see all so so many people involved and so many kids involved. Um, when it comes to elections, Rob, thank you for, very much for everything you all do. You all always run such a professional uh, election. Um, and I'd just like to encourage the people out there to really study your candidates. Um, I think this is one of the first years we've had so many um, special interest groups involved and uh, in, in, in local elections. I, I can't believe that. I don't think anybody up here ever received a penny from a special interest group like we have this uh, this year so really look at your look at your people study them see what kind of uh, special interest groups are, are following them if you like those special interest groups help them if you don't well you know let, let's uh, uh, vote for the right people but uh, again I uh, I think this is a very important very very important election we're gonna have a five-man commission 
this five-man committee is going to make a lot of important decisions for you. So make sure you you uh, you get out there and, and vote and, and figure your candidates out. Um, other than that, I just uh, you know again just want to apologize that I didn't make the last meeting. That's okay. And, uh, we, did, we did your job. All right. We did away with district one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Commissioner. Oh. <clears throat> well, uh, this past since the last meeting on uh, 9/17, I attended the uh, recovery of Grant County uh, at the golf park. Um, read the proclamation that the commission had passed on this and cooked. I don't know how many hamburgers. 300 or something hamburgers and stuff. Uh, I didn't want a hamburger probably for another month or so. But uh, it went really well. I was very impressed in, in the attendance. I think we're going to have an annual thing. Uh, Recovery, Grant County is, is an important organization, and it's important that we follow and uh, support it. Um, on 919 gave uh, health council an update on two casa uh, we had some new members on and uh, and so gave them an update and, and uh, where we are also attended on 92020 attended the yak the youth advisory council meeting in district court and uh, uh, had a great presentation on the activities that they're involved in 922 uh, <laughs> went to the county fair and, and I was really impressed. I always like the kids showing their animals and that's what I went. I saw the pigs over there and and and, and saw the cheers uh, family there doing doing their thing as 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 they always do. But I enjoy the fair and, and it's really important that we support those kids because you know this is a year long commitment that these guys do and uh, and a lot of money and uh, and. Uh, the other thing that's important about this is that it's a family thing. It's a family thing where that year the family participates in those shows and stuff. So it's it's a great thing to be a part of. Uh, then on 927 had another meeting uh, with uh, two CASA. We generally have made three or four of those a month. 10th uh, grade made a presentation to the uh, uh uh, Gila Regional Medical Center staff in reference to two costs on what we've been trying to do is address two different uh, segments of the community who would use two CASA, the flow and how you get in and how they would participate because what's important about two CASA is that it's a it's a coordinated uh, effort where all the different agencies understand how they come in and how they can participate and it's all under one roof under a comprehensive uh, treatment plan so that's uh, we continue that. We still got the attorneys and uh, the defense bar and the DA's office to do. And then probably after we get to the end of that, then we continue to revisit the other agencies to try to come together. Uh, I attended on 1013 for a couple of days the New Mexico Association of Counties board meeting. I have prepared a document for the elected officials, and I will be giving you a copy of that as far as what went on there. The other thing. And, and, and Misha mentioned it already was the Heal Forest Plan uh, community meeting on November the 2nd from 4 to 6 30. Uh, that's an important meeting that the commission be involved in and, and I would highly recommend to the other two commissioners to sit down with Misha and discuss with him what your interests are in this so that it can be addressed at that meeting and because uh, I won't be around. Uh, I'm going to attend it and give them my thoughts, uh, but um, I think it's important that maybe the two of you sit down with Misha so that he can represent you well, okay? Uh, with that, I really don't have anything else. Okay. So, yes, sir. I would like to announce to the community that the tax bills will be going out next week, so prepare for that. And also, I would like to uh, invite them, anyone that has a question on the formula levy, how specifically it would affect them. If they want to call our office, they're welcome to call us at 574-0055, and we will help them with the calculations to so they can estimate, get a, make an estimate of what 
they how they will be affected directly with their uh, the, the mill increase. So we're ready to help. I'm sorry. Thank you very much. No problem. So I guess that just leaves me. Um, I guess my, I, I have a question. I, maybe for Misha or, or Charlene on the convention center. Are we got a drop dead date on when we're ready to do a grand opening? Uh, Mr. Chairman, we. Uh, the initial final payment construction is complete with the exception of a few minor items on the punch list. What um, we are hoping before we do a grand opening is have all the furniture in. That's been ordered. Um, it was a long lead time to get that in. However, we'd like to do that um, late November, early December, um, definitely before the end of the year. So we're, okay. it's a beautiful facility. We haven't been in there in the last couple of weeks. Please go take a look. Um, and once the furniture gets in there, I think it's just going to be beautiful. Um, in addition to Kevin, did a, Kevin did a very good job on the interior. So hopefully. And we're looking forward to that grand opening. I, I know Bucky already ready to come and play. And, uh, he, he said he wants to revive the buck and the vessel, so we'll see what we can we can do. Well, that's the only question I had. I just want to make sure we were moving on on that. And uh, um, oh, and I have one more on CDBG. What are, what is the? Are, have we started the, the selection process on our project this year for this year? Yeah, that's coming up pretty quick, isn't it? Sweet. Or is it already too late? No, we witnessed for, for the CDBG for this year. Um, okay. But we currently have working with the CDBG Economic Development, and we didn't want to tackle another project. Okay. Like that. That's fine. And we had all of our capital outlay projects in line. We did not have to revert any of those. <laughs> no, we did not. We um, we were in uh, compliance with all of that. We didn't lose any any uh, any funds in that. Right. So, um, okay. And we're currently working on putting our presentation together for next year's capital outlay request to present to prospectors in December. Okay. Yeah, that was a nervous day. Yeah. That was weak, and I know I stayed on the phone. Uh, uh, on the, uh, the one capital outlay that two costs I had and uh, reassured that all the 16s were safe and so I felt good about that and uh, Priscilla was a great help to me uh, I kept in touch with her and she helped me out a lot and so did the Senator uh, Morales he helped me out in uh, getting me to understand that we're all right on that but therefore while I was pretty freaked out whenever I heard the news um, Rez, we turn out just in our office does uh, take the most job of staying on top of them. So if you ever want to know where any project is that pertains to you or your district, um, because a lot of times some of the um, information that is presented to our legislators is a few months behind. So sometimes they get a list saying, that oh, we haven't spent or we haven't started our project. So um, I would encourage you to check with Randy first because he can tell you right down to the penny where we are. Um, this is, and he submits monthly reports to uh, Misha. Okay. That's all I had. Anybody else have anything else? Okay. Take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes.